Hey guys, Dan here. Welcome to Dan Reviews It. We are uh, back with The Connors. Season 2 has just begun, and uh, we're going to talk about the uh, brand new episode called uh, Preemies, Weed, and Infidelity, which I just watched. And uh, I guess just sort of the season ramp up as a whole, because uh, we know a few things about the season thus far. Um, and of course, if you have not seen the episode yet, probably watch the episode first. I mean, I don't really do major spoilers, but just so you can, uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't like to be spoiled with anything, so um, if, if you feel the same way, I would watch the episode first and then come watch the review. Um, but if you don't care about that, then go for it. Um, so first of all, we have more episodes this season of The Connors than last season, almost double. Um, than either Roseanne Season 10 or The Connor Season 1. So that is awesome. There was originally going to be 13 episodes for the season, which already was more than uh, Season 1 was. And now there's going to be a total of 19 episodes, which is so cool because not only is that more or less a full season. I mean, back in the day, a full season was, you know, like 24 episodes now it's pretty rare to get that many. Uh, even a real successful show usually will do about 22. That's typically what, um, especially on ABC, that's what like you know Blackish typically does, or um, you know Fresh Off the Boat or whatever. So, um, but the the fact is that most of these revivals reboots are getting far less episodes because either the actors don't really want to, you know, put forth the effort, or they've got things going on in other or areas of their lives, you know, other projects, perhaps. Um, so, like, for example, BH90210 was only six episodes. Um, the Will and Grace revivals have been uh, more than most. I mean, they've been, I forget how many, I think it was like 13 the first season, maybe 16 the second, um, but none of them, you know, have gotten to 19 episodes. So, I, I'm really excited um, that we have that many episodes to look forward to. Now, I hope that doesn't mean the uh, quality of the episodes is going to go down a little bit. What is kind of nice about a 10 or 13 episode order from the network is that they can really, you know, the writers can really hone in on what makes the show work, and there's not any like filler episodes. But, you know, all the same. Um, you know, like I'm currently going through Everybody Loves Raymond seasons, for example, and there was usually around 24 episodes a season of that, and, you know, most of them are pretty good. I mean, there's, I guess, some fillers here or there, but, um, you know, that used to be the standard. So I, I'm very excited that we're getting 19 episodes this season. That's, it's, it's, it just makes me so happy. Um, we already know some things about the season in terms of guest stars coming in. We know Katie Segal is going to be not only guesting like she did last season, but um, in a more recurring nature. So we we may see her in, who knows, you know, six episodes, eight episodes, I don't know, um, here and there. Uh, sort of maybe like Matthew Broderick was last season as uh, Jackie's boyfriend. He was in at least half the episodes, I would say. Um, we also know that David will be back again. Johnny Galecki, of course, Big Bang Theory is done. So he has sort of a more free schedule. But at the same time, he has said he doesn't want to be tied down to, uh, you know, another sitcom right away or another even just, you know, regular show right away. Um, so uh, he's going to pop up, f you know, here or there, I guess, there hasn't been any news of, like, how many episodes, but uh, he was certainly talked about in this episode and is a plot point. So hopefully that means he'll be showing up, you know, sooner than later. Um, and then we also know Dan Aykroyd's going to be in episode three, sort of re-teaming with John Goodman from uh, Blues Brothers 2000, part of an ABC stunt casting week that I talked about uh, in my news and reviews show last week. They've got a whole week planned of, you know, re revi revisiting uh, old old cast members and stuff. Like Tracy Ellis Ross from Blackish is going to have all of her girlfriends co-stars back on and all that. So, uh, so it'll be interesting to see Dan Aykroyd. Always enjoy seeing him. So that's going to be in episode three. Um, other than that, the only other thing we really know so far is that uh, Maya Lynn Robinson, who played Gina, 
will no longer be on the show, at least in any sort of regular uh, role. She was credited in the uh, first season of The Connors. However, didn't really show up much. If you have watched my reviews, you know that one of my big gripes about season one of The Connors, and really season ten of Roseanne, too, is that they're just not utilizing DJ or his family at all. I don't think Michael Fishman is a particularly good adult actor. He was good when he was a little kid on Roseanne, but um, so I think that's probably why, but at the same time, you know, give him something to do other than, you know, one line in his, in a scene or, you know, in this particular episode, I had to laugh when it first started because he's the voiceover saying it was filmed in front of a live studio audience and I just kind of said out loud, oh, is that going to be his one line in the whole episode? It wasn't. He got at least one more, maybe two, um, but again, not really utilizing him very much. Um, but uh, Gina, the Gina character played by Myelin Robinson last season, uh, was deployed to Afghanistan, so she is out for the time being. She may show up in an episode here or there, um, but she is committed to a new show on CBS called The Unicorn, so I will be watching that and reviewing it in my weekly news and reviews show, so we'll see how that shakes out. But, uh, you know, I, personally, if I were her, I think I would have been looking for another show to be on, too, because they just weren't giving her character anything to do. They had her come in, read a line or two, and typically they were funny, and then that was it. They didn't really uh, do much with the character or DJ's character or their daughter. So we'll see how the season progresses if they, you know, focus a little bit more on DJ being... Um, not really a single dad, but just sort of a, uh, currently a single dad, because the mom is uh, not in the picture right now, but of course they're still married and everything. So, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how all of this shakes out as the season progresses, um, but first, why don't we talk about the season premiere? Um, so, here's, uh, the, you know, there's some good and some bad about the episode, First of all, we've talked about this at length with both Roseanne Season 10 and The Connor Season 1. Uh, the episode lengths are several minutes shorter than in the 90s in Roseanne's heyday. So here we get about 21 and a half minutes of show. And basically what happens in this episode is we're uh, revisiting some storylines from last season uh, where Becky got pregnant and we are carrying that... Uh, pun intended, I suppose, uh, to term with the uh, pregnancy, and she is having her baby in this episode. So we see that uh, pretty much in the opening scene, her water breaks. So that is probably the A story, I guess. And then there's sort of two B stories, and they both revolve around Darlene. And the one is her going back and forth between David and Ben. Ben was introduced uh, in the last season, played by J.R. Ferguson, and he's her boss at this magazine. We see him in the episode. We don't see David, um, but we uh, we know that things have happened between both of them. In the first scene, she's telling Jackie how uh, her and David made out, and she doesn't know what to do. She's not that kind of woman to you know, sleep with two people at once, but she doesn't know, and this and that. So that's sort of one of the B stories, with Darlene, and then the other one is that uh, her daughter, Harris, is selling some uh, pot cookies at school, and so we're, we're dealing a little bit with that, and maybe her not being around enough, which uh, leads its way to uh, a, a good scene with her and John Goodman, um, you know, around the kitchen table. I, I find the uh, Dan and Darlene scenes to be some of the best in the series, certainly the best uh, dramatic scenes in the series. I think for pure comedy, it's got to be probably Aunt Jackie and Darlene, or maybe Aunt Jackie and Dan. Any kind of combination, really, of the three of them. But um, but we, we saw that, you know, in the opening scene with uh, Aunt Jackie and Darlene in the living room discussing the whole David and uh, Ben thing. So... A lot of things going on in this episode. Too many? Yes, I would say so. I think for a 21-minute show to have three plots, 
It just doesn't allow time for any of them to be serviced properly. I understand that the two Darlene stories uh, dovetailed with each other because um, the reason she's not around as much to figure out what her daughter's doing and smelling that she's baking, you know, pot cookies in the in the Connor kitchen uh, is because she's out after hours, you know, way past work with either David or Ben. So, you know, we're, we're seeing that, uh, you know, those stories converging. But because of that, just in the, in the short length of the show, there's just no time devoted to both of them properly. I think, I would say probably the David and Ben story gets about as much steam in the premiere as it needs. Because obviously that's something that's not going to be resolved in one episode. I imagine it's probably going to be a season-long arc, or at least maybe half the season, uh, is going to be her going back and forth between these two guys. And so, so that's fine. I mean, to not devote too much time to that story is fine. But to not devote much time to the Your Daughter is Selling Pot at School story, um, I think is a little bit of a shame. First of all, uh, there's a great Lucy Punch appearance as uh, the mother of one of the boys that Harris sold the cookie to. I love Lucy Punch. I first took notice of her in Bad Teacher, uh, the Cameron Diaz movie from, I don't know, 2011 probably. Um, and then, you know, I've seen her over the years in many different things. She had her own sitcom for a little bit on Fox called Ben and Kate, which I thought uh, she was very good in. And here she, uh, you know, plays sort of, um, I don't know, white trashy, I guess. You know, she's looking for a reimbursement for the money that she spent on taking her son to urgent care after the, the pot. And, you know, she's talking about, she t you know, she tells a great joke about how she's uh, looking to get a tattoo removed and she wants the money for that, if nothing else. Um, so, you know, there was a good exchange there. I would have loved to see more with her. Uh, her and Darlene get one very, very brief exchange that ends in a funny joke from Darlene, but nothing else. Um, I would have liked to see more of that. Um... And just, I don't know, I mean, are we really, uh, maybe we'll go back, maybe we'll revisit the uh, the selling of the pot storyline in a future episode, I don't know. Um, but boy, it seemed to just barely be touched in this episode. You know, Harris f thinking it's not really a big deal, and hey, you know, everybody's uh, selling pot in school, and she has a couple of good lines with that. Um... And then also, you know, there's a little commentary there about, oh, well, you know, pot's going to be legal for everybody in a little bit anyway, so who cares, da 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 da, da. So I certainly think there was more to be mined from that that they just didn't have time for um, because those really were the B stories. I mean, I guess combined you could call Darlene the A story, with her sort of two stories in one, uh, because I would say we probably spend more time on Darlene's stuff than Becky, but it's two separate Darlene stories, so I, you can't even really say that. But um, so then the the Becky pregnancy stuff, you know, she's having her baby, she's in the hospital. That too is quite quick. Um, her baby is two months early, so you know she's a preemie. So there's some stuff with that, um, but. We've seen a lot of that before. I mean, you know, Darlene's baby, which turns out to be Harris, of course, um, you know, ha she had some problems with her at the hospital, and, you know, so we sort of already went there. Um, and then uh, Jackie and Roseanne's mom is in the show, Beverly, uh, played by the wonderful Estelle Parsons. She only showed up, I believe, in one episode last season, Maybe two, but I think just one. I think she showed up in a couple in, in Roseanne season 10, but I think only one Connors episode so far uh, before this one. But uh, she's always a delight to see. I mean, I sh look, you know, Parsons is in her 90s, so obviously we can't expect her to be, you know, a series regular or anything, but, uh, but it's always great to see her, and she had some funny lines. Um, but, again... You know, not enough time really devoted to 
her. Um, it's revealed at the end of the episode, and this is a spoiler, so if you haven't seen it, um, you know, this will be the only really spoilery thing I say, but um, Becky has decided to name the baby after her, um, Beverly Rose. So, you know, that, that elicits uh, a joke from Jackie about, you know, how, how horrible that is, basically. Um, and he, here again, it's like, you know, there's a couple of good jokes at the hospital, but everything just flies by so fast. Um, and look, I suppose it's good for, a, you know, a 21-minute show to only feel like, you know, 12 minutes rather than feeling like 45 minutes. The show certainly knows how to get in and out of a joke, but I just think there's either not enough time devoted to these stories or, and I think it's actually a little bit of both, or, you know, these are sort of stories that we've seen before. I mean, we, we saw Darlene, you know, with uh, way back in the day with Jimmy, played by uh, Danny Masterson, um, you know, in the original Roseanne run, you know, Jimmy versus David, you know, so we've we've seen sort of her go back and forth with that. Obviously, it holds a little more weight now because she's had children with David and all of that, but... Um, you know, we've kind of seen that before. We've seen the whole baby thing before with Roseanne and, um, you know, the, the baby being early and having health problems and all that. So none of it is really treading new ground except for the the story about the, the selling of the weed. Uh, you know, and here again, I mean, we've mined that a little bit with the old Roseanne. It wasn't selling it so much um, as it was they found old pot that David had you know, admitted was his because he thought it was Darlene's. You know, that's that's one of the all-time classic episodes, I think, when the uh, the Connors decide to smoke the pot and get high and, um, you know, Jackie ends up in the bathtub. and um, That's, you know, one of, one of my favorite episodes probably. But, you know, so we've, we've sort of done a little bit with pot so far. Um, but, you know, it is a whole different world about that issue 30 years after the fact, you know. Uh, so I would like to see them explore more of that, I suppose. Barely scratched the surface there. So, I don't know. For me, uh, it wasn't a great premiere in terms of how it stacks up with other episodes of The Connors or Roseanne Season 10. I mean, you sort of have to lump them all together. I know ABC was touting this as, uh, oh, the return of, you know, last fall's number one show, number one new show. Uh, you know, okay, is it really a new show? technically sure, um, but I mean, the the theme song is the same, and the cast is the same, and they're all playing the same characters, so I don't know. I don't think it's a new show, but um, but so I, I just felt like it was a little bit of a letdown. I mean, it was funny. Don't get me wrong. There was a lot of jokes. I think they went a little hard on the laugh track in the opening scene. It was like every line got a laugh. Eh, you know, ease off on that a little bit, which they did as the episode went on. But I would say this is probably not the best of what we're in store for. I, You know, I, I think there's going to be much better episodes coming down the pike. I certainly hope so. But uh, I'm going to leave the season premiere with a B. Um, it was, it was okay, you know, I, I, I had some problems with it, it was funny, but just, you know, all the problems that seemed to plague, uh, Roseanne season 10 and the Connor season 1, sort of the, the worst aspects of them, you know, the, the storylines not being fresh enough and also wrapping up too quickly or just not enough time devoted to them. Like, I don't, I don't necessarily think the Harris weed thing has wrapped up, I just think they didn't devote hardly any time to it, and it's... You know, they left it ambiguous enough that if they never went back to it, I don't think you'd be, you know, four episodes or five episodes in, be like, hey, whatever happened uh, with Harris selling that pot cookie at school? I don't think it was, you know, because they didn't make it that pressing of a, of a plot line. So, I don't know. Um, I, I sort of expected more from the premiere. I was happy to see everybody back. I'm always happy when it's an Estelle Parsons episode. Um, but I certainly hoped for more, I guess, um, with this one. But I love seeing everybody back together. The chemistry 
just keeps getting better. I mean, I, I really, I think they, they've hit their, their stride and found their sweet spot, um, to be honest, once Roseanne left. And, uh, you know, they could focus more on Darlene and her children um, than anything else. So I liked seeing that. Uh, I believe the second episode is supposed to be a Mark-centric episode, um, Darlene's son, and sort of exploring his gender fluidity a little bit more. Um, so that should prove very interesting, and I'm looking forward to that if, if what I read is true, um, that that's sort of what the second episode is going to focus on. Uh, and then episode three will be the one with uh, Dan Aykroyd. So I think there's some things to look forward to here, but certainly um, not an amazing start to the season, but certainly glad to have everybody back. So uh, that's my piece on the season premiere of The Connors, season two. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't yet. We're over 300 subscribers on the channel now, which is awesome. And comment below with your thoughts on the episode. I love hearing from you guys. And as well, if you haven't checked out uh, any of my new weekly TV news and review shows yet, go ahead and do that. Um, I'll be putting up another one this week um, talking about some of the brand new shows on uh, this week. We're going to be talking about Mixed Dish. We're going to be talking about... Uh, Bob Hart's Abishola. We're going to be talking about Prodigal Son. Um, so all shows I've watched thus far for the new season. So check that out. Check out some of the past episodes as well. Um, and I guess that's about it. I mean, I'll I'll see you guys next week for episode two of the new season. Uh, hopefully it's a little bit better than this one. But uh, we will see. Time will tell. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you back here next time. Bye.